gratified, relieved, not surprised. Uh, Judge Brotherton is a 30-year veteran of the bench from Wichita Falls. He is exactly the guy that we wanted behind home plate today in Game 7 of the series calling balls and strikes. That ultimately, number one, when the business of judging becomes personal, our judicial heritage is rich in the texture that the judge needs to walk away. That's number one, and I know in the memo in support of the motion to recuse, I quote, noted legal sage, and this is important, fellas, Ulrich Goldfinger, who said, we have a saying in Chicago, Mr. Bond, once is happenstance, twice coincidence, but the third time it's enemy action. Well, the enemy action in this case was a template for Judge Kemp's bias and prejudice. I, I don't think it was a close case, and I recognize that in your typical recusal, the tie goes to the judge. That's fine. This was not your typical case. Not on this record, not today, not with that guy I had the privilege of representing. The minute that the public perceives that the playing field is not level, and that's why when you all heard me talk about a reasonable member of the public and what they would think, that's not me making stuff up. That's what the law says. And it's that test for a very simple reason, that a member of the public outside Lou Sterrett needs to know that the men and women who call balls and strikes in game seven of the series aren't biased, aren't prejudiced, aren't going to squeeze the strike zone on hitters and, and pitchers that they don't like. And that's what this case was all about. This was personal. This wasn't business. I would refer you to the facts. I would refer you to the law. And I would refer you to a series of rulings, comments, facial expressions. You know, if a picture's worth a thousand words, that video is worth 10,000. That's all. One of the reasons for recusal is what we call extrajudicial bias. In other words, whether or not a judge is biased or prejudiced based upon stuff that has nothing to do with the case. Meaning you walk in there and as my late mom would say, you've got an attitude, okay? <laughs> you've got some too. And so by alluding to Judge Crusoe's policies or initiatives, she walks in and that has nothing to do with the Amber Geiger case. And that's why it was important because she had a mindset long before they ever walk back in chambers about Judge Crusoe. That's why that's important.